Today in the news, it's all AMD from top to bottom. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So, Threadripper was unveiled last week and it feels like we didn't get the full lineup. We got the 24 core 3960X coming in at $1400 and the 32 core 3970X at a whopping two grand. Now we were expecting a small teaser for a higher clock count model too, but we didn't get it. We know, or at least we expect, that AMD has a 3990X in stores thanks to this embargo lift image shared by videocards.com. Well, MSI might have accidentally revealed that AMD has a 64 core coming up in their latest video made to showcase their TRX40 creator motherboards. The video has a shot with the task manager opened and a grid of 128 logical cores. Now MSI quickly took down the video and re-uploaded it without the task manager shots but it's a pretty good indication of what's coming. I mean videos like these are shot well in advance and we were expecting AMD to tease us with the 3990X's core count so chances are this is real. Speaking of Threadripper, some numbers have already started creeping up on the interwebs, specifically 3D Mark results. The 3960X has popped up with benchmarks on Firestrike, TimeSpy, and TimeSpy Extreme. Now, the 24 core CPU was tested with two different GPUs, the Vega 64 and a 2080 Ti. But that doesn't matter since those tests thankfully have a dedicated CPU score. Now, if we have to compare the 3960X to an Intel CPU, the only choice would be the 9980X. E. It's a little bit unfair since Intel is about to come out with the 10980XE, which is $400 less expensive than the 3960X, but we have to do with what we have. So, the scores. In the standard Firestrike physics test, the CPU scored 27,751 points. This is much faster than the old 24 core, the 2970X, about 28% faster. As for the 9980XE, it scores on average around 30,000 points, making it faster than the uh, AMD 3960. This might have something to do with the overall faster frequency of Intel CPUs. In TimeSpy's CPU simulation, it's a different story. The 3960X scores around 12,600 points, whereas the Intel 9980XE averages around 11,000 points. And the last test that surfaced is on TimeSpy Extreme, and there are two results, one with a 2080 Ti and one with a Vega 64. Once again, GPU doesn't really matter for the CPU score. The 3960X scores around 12,600 to 12,700 points, while the 9980XE averages about 10,200 points, although that's with the uh, multi-core enhancements built into certain motherboards. Now, keep in mind that this could still be preliminary results, but I think that we should expect those to be final. Those are clearly gaming-focused benchmarks, so it might not translate into productivity benchmarks. In any case, with scores that are this close to each other, I have to say I might have been right on the last video. By making the 3960 X $1,400, AMD is giving Intel the opportunity to sell their CPUs at the $1,000 price range. Sure, the 3950X is going to be a pretty big hurdle for Intel, but that will depend on how fast it will be. So I guess we'll have to wait until the 25th of November to figure that out. In other AMD news, they recently posted a rundown of what the next AGISA microcode update will bring to the table. First thing to note is that the new AGISA 1004 is the only version validated and recommended for the 3950X. So if you want to buy the new CPU, you'll have to make sure that you have the latest microcode. Then there is the Eco mode. Not only will this be available for the 3950X, but also for the full lineup of Zen 2 based Ryzen 3000 CPUs. That means you can run any of the 105 or 95 watt CPUs down to 65 watts and any of these 65 watt CPUs down to 45. This is actually really nice. Understandably, performance will be considerably lower in these modes, but it will avoid you having to fiddle around with the settings in the BIOS or Ryzen Master to lower power consumption in a super small form factor build. Plus, it will avoid adding more SKUs to their lineup for the same processor except downclocked, which I'm not a fan of. Lastly, for AMD, it looks like they will finally be implementing a feature that 
Team Blue and Green already have. In their latest few Linux patches, there are several references to integer scaling, meaning the feature could come very soon. In fact, AMD has a feedback page where you can vote for a feature you would like to see in their next Adrenaline update. After voting, it shows you the result and integer scaling is at the top of the list with over 20,000 votes. The next Vika update for Adrenaline should be in December, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see it then. Hopefully, in all AMD fashion, we'll see the feature not only for Navi, but also for Polaris and Vega-based cards. I mean, it's nice to see that Intel and Nvidia added it, but the Intel version is only available for Gen 11 graphics, and Nvidia only enabled it for their Turing cards, so only on the uh, 20XX cards and 16XX cards. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the uh, weekend news roundup. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.